ready. We'll here we go. Closing, going live. Right. Hello, everybody. I'm Joe Marion, president of ASCDI, and I want to welcome you to Disposition 21. This is our second year of doing this online event, and it's catching on. This year's event is an international one. We have attendees from nine countries, four continents. Um, our registrations are about 103% higher than they were pre-pandemic when we were having physical meetings. Um, speaking of international, uh, we did a virtual trip to uh, South America earlier this year. We're planning on doing one, uh, a virtual trip to Europe and a virtual trip to Asia later in the year. So please stick with ASCDI and travel the globe with us. What I'd like to do now is go through the agenda for the next couple of days, tell you a little bit about what you're going to be seeing. Uh, as soon as I'm done with this session, you're going to uh, meet the two gentlemen who are on the screen with me here. Uh, we're going to, these are really two of the most respected uh, folks in our industry. Um, one speaking about ITAD, the other one speaking about the secondary market and services. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a minute. Following that, we're going to hear from Blanco. Um, we all know who Blanco is, the international data security company. Uh, what you might not know is Blanco's, well, Blanco's products can help reduce your active touch time and human error. So it makes you becoming really more efficient ITAD and reseller. And we're going to talk about the advantages of automating later today. Following Blanco, uh, we're going to talk about what the heck is ERP. And I'll give you a clue. ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. Uh, it's uh, an integrated management system, if you will, uh, on how to you know, manage your, your inventory and your products and your sales and so forth. Back in the old days, many years ago, my father, who used to be in this business, used to keep his inventory on old three by five index cards. Later on, we kind of evolved to um, magnetic ledger cards uh, and then Excel spreadsheets. ERP is kind of the next phase, the next, the next step, if you will, in that evolution. Uh, we're going to be at ERP. After ERP, um, we're beaming in Brett uh, from Australia. I think it's about 2 a.m. in the morning there. Uh, we're beaming, beaming in uh, David Mayberry from the UK. It's about 5 o'clock there. So one of those guys is going to be drinking coffee, and the other guy is going to be drinking beer. But you guys can kind of figure out who's who. Um, Frank's going to be with us, Frank Kobachewski, uh, Todd Bone, and Arthur Fryman from the U.S. We're going to be talking about Cisco licensing. Uh, there's been a lot of changes in Cisco licensing, um, and we're going to kind of focus a little bit about that. Uh, Cisco smart licensing is what it's called. Um, last thing for today, uh, we're going to have uh, uh, Dennis Ward. Dennis is not a lawyer. Uh, that picture looks a little bit like a lawyer. Um, and is the title of the session, uh, Chain of Custody, sounds legal, but it's not. Um, We've given Dennis about 15 minutes to kind of talk about a, a very specific product that his company offers. Normally, we don't do that. We don't focus on products, but we found this one intriguing. Uh, it's a product that's going to enable you to track your products anywhere around the globe. Uh, and that'll be uh, with Dennis uh, later today. Following that, we're going to have um, uh, uh, a, a social hour. Uh, we have the, one of the reasons why we like this platform, why we've cho chosen this platform. It allows all of our attendees to click on the links uh, to allow you to ch te text chat with people or to video chat with people. But later on in the day, we're going to have our speed networking session. The way that works is you, you sign up uh, and it's, it cycles through all the attendees at this event. And you, each, you get three minutes per attendee to talk a little bit about what your company is, what you do. Um, and so it's a real good way to network with folks. And we're going to, we'll do that the last thing today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to kick off with uh, a manufacturer brand enforcement efforts. Um, four years ago, a company by the name of Impression Products faced off with Lexmark at the uh, U.S. Supreme Court. Um, Google it. There's a decision, Lexmark v. Impression Products. Um, and I'll tell you the end of the story. I'll, I'll, I'll ruin the ending for you. Uh, impression won. Uh, ASCDI support Impression. Impression won the case. But what you don't know is that, you know, what happened along the way. And uh, Impression Products was, you know, you know, offered a very lucrative offer by Lexmark to settle. And um, Eric Smith, the CEO of, of, of Impression, said, no, we're going to do the right thing. We're taking this all away. So the case went all the way up to the Supreme Court. 
So we'll hear about that. And then along with Eric, we have not one, not two, but three attorneys. So don't let that scare you. It's actually a pretty interesting session. Uh, that'll be tomorrow, first thing. Uh, then we're going to hear about ITED uh, certification from GreenEye. Uh, GreenEye uh, helps with audits for people that want to become ITEDs. They help uh, put in place systems. Uh, for ITEDs, and they do training for people that want to become ITEDs. So if you're interested in becoming an ITED, if you're interested in in, in retaining your ITED, uh, through, uh, this is a session you want to hear. Um, then we're going to go to Redeploy uh, 2021. We're going to talk about what's changed in our industry um, and the ways that these companies have not only adapted to the change, but are, are ways in which you can adapt your company to the new world, and it is a new world out there, and you'll hear more about that at the, uh, tomorrow. Then we're going to have one more social hour. Again, another one of our speed networking sessions. Uh, we're going to do that tomorrow, um, and we, you know, it's five o'clock somewhere. So by tomorrow, I expect you to have your your refrigerator stocked and ready for that social hour. Lastly, I uh, want to thank our sponsors. Uh, we have nine sponsors today uh, that have booths, and we have eleven additional sponsors that uh, did not take booths. But without these sponsors, without the financial support, we really couldn't make this possible. So really take the time, go to their booths, look at what they're, they're, they're selling, if you will. Um, some of them have videos, some of them have live people at the booths. And as you see them along the way, thank them. Thank them for their support uh, of the industry. I thank them for sure. Okay, I'm gonna introduce, as I said before, the two gentlemen that are patiently standing there in a moment. But I, I just wanted to say a few words, first of all. The green movement around the world has begun to change our industry. Uh, Europe is leading the charge, but the U.S. is very close behind. The pandemic changed our, mar changed our market, too. Uh, first, there was an initial rush to buy anything that you could find to outfit uh, the home office worker. Uh, desk, uh, desktop, um, laptops you know, flew off the shelves, headsets, uh, microphones. All that there was a bad rush for that stuff at the beginning of the pandemic. Then things quieted down a little bit. Um, the lack of supply drove prices in our market up. Um, lately, we've heard that there's a uh, refresh orders that were put on hold uh, for data centers and 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 computer uh, offices um, have started to to fl uh, flow in again. So we're seeing a lot more refresh orders kind of facing uh, hitting hitting the market today. What comes next is going to be the execution of those orders. So there should be a pretty good tick up, if you will, in our industry as we get towards the end of this year. Green is the new black. Governments around the world are adopting green policies that will and are affecting our industry. Uh, in some countries, for example, companies are required to buy a certain percentage of their product used, uh, and that's going to spread around the world. There are organizations who me measure how green manufacturers are, uh, certifying organizations. They used to measure those uh, companies based on the content of their equipment, but we've been kind of meeting and lobbying with them our position has always been that you can't say a manufacturer is green if they don't allow or if they restrict, if you will, the resale of their products. And these certifying bodies are starting to see it that way. So more and more, you're going to see pressure now on manufacturers to allow the secondary or to support the secondary markets on their product. That bodes well for our industry as well. Some of the companies in our industry uh, have embraced those changes. They've become ITADs. Some have not, but the handwriting is on the wall. And with these issues in mind, we've put together a really super event for the next two days. And it's my pleasure to kick it off with two thought leaders in our industry. First, from an ITAD perspective, we're going to hear from Reich Sandlin. He's one of the finest ITAD consultants on the planet. And then we're going to hear from Todd Bone from XSI, and he'll give you a perspective from the service side. Reich, take it away. Well, thanks, Joe. Uh, you, you stole some of, my, some of my thunder, so I'll probably steal some of Todd's. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, th thanks for the introduction. Uh, I have been involved in this industry for about 16 years now, and uh, including running a, a leading ITAD firm for another number of years, selling that firm to private equity, uh, and then consulting. I've also been involved in uh, establishing standards, uh, running standards certification programs, and helping others. The consulting I've been doing is really helping companies with their strategy, helping to scale, helping to grow and, and chart their course. So, you know, I wanted to just touch on a few things that are impacting the industry right now and over the next few years. Uh, COVID, you know, Joe already mentioned that, that it's really impacted businesses and employees, but it also impacted the projects uh, that, that had been planned. 
So things like upgrades, refreshes, decommissions were all put on hold last year. And, uh, you know, data centers were locked down with the exception of, of critical staff. Offices shifted to work from home. So we see, saw such an impact from that last year. But, and, and companies stretched and stretched and stretched the life of their equipment uh, through the pandemic, like a big rubber band. You know, the anecdotal stories we're hearing right now are that data centers are back to work. Offices are, are starting to fill back up. Uh, both are restarting those projects that they had put on hold last year. So second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter this year are, are looking very active for upgrades, decommissions, refreshes. And my contacts are saying that that this this rubber band is snapping back and we're seeing, that, you know, so we're seeing this activity ramp up rapidly. So be ready, be ready to take advantage of that and, and to support your, your clients and customers. Legislative and regulatory issues, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of activity going on there uh, from international discussions around the Basel Convention affecting trade and used working equipment, which is new. It used to be a waste focus. Now they're starting to talk about how do we regulate the, the trade and used uh, equipment. That's, a, that's an issue. We're seeing states in the U.S. And, and international as well that are enacting more and more privacy regulation. Well, you know, that impacts, you know, so you're seeing impacts on you from the trade perspective, but we're seeing impact on, impact on the rest of businesses from a privacy perspective that's going to drive more business to ITADs. So ASCDI's work with repair.org and, and the right to repair movement is gaining traction. Uh, we're also seeing with the new U.S. administration more enforcement activities. We expect to see more enforcement out of EPA, out of uh, OSHA and other agencies. So it's going to be a busy year to stay on top of advocacy and compliance matters. You know, last year we launched the certification program with ASCDI uh, and, and it, it was very well positioned to really, you know, overlay R2 and eStewards and Rios and ISO and, and ADISA and all these other, uh, other standards uh, as an, as an add-on, as a, as a real benefit. Um, we knew it was early. Uh, R2 V3 was just rolling out, but in 2021, we're really starting to see many companies uh, pursue R2, either transitioning from the old version or uh, starting a, a new certification effort to position themselves strategically in the marketplace. So ASCDI certification program in 2021 really just, it, it layers on top of that because it ties in ethics and it ties in the, uh, the, the strong services verification that ASCDI members go through. So, so that the ethics program is something that's unique. And to, to, to combine that with these strong certifications is, is really going to, to make a difference. Uh, so I think in 2021 20, and 2022, as R2V3 continues to roll out and ramp up, uh, ASCDI's ITAD certify program is also going to grow. Uh, we've seen during the pandemic, we've seen companies in this business, uh, you know, some, some kind of pulled back and said, hey, I'm going to wait. Uh, but others pushed forward. They leaned forward on their skis and they said, hey, this is an opportunity. This slow time is an opportunity to invest in my business. It's an opportunity to grow, to scale, uh, add certifications, expand, acquire. We've seen acquisitions happening. Uh, we're seeing that those kind of conversations ramping up. Uh, some added new processes or, or automation like Blanco's intelligent business routing. Uh, we've seen upgrades to software and systems uh, like NetSuite ERP or IQ Resellers ERP system. We've seen added security in facilities as they prepared to, to, to become stronger ITAD players and services like on-site services like Guardians. Uh, you'll hear about tomorrow services like uh, the GPS tracking capability for chain of custody that Greenly Focus uh, offers. Uh, and we're seeing companies hire. They're, they're saying, hey, I want strong talent in place now. As this snapback occurs, I want strong talent in place to be able to, to, to provide the services I want to provide. So this is continuing. Uh, don't be shy. Your competitors are preparing for battle, so be ready. Circular economy and ESG. Uh, these are buzzwords, but there's a real global awakening going on. Uh, Joe mentioned this earlier. Uh, we're seeing more and more interest in the circular economy. 
and that matches with ASCDI's membership well. So, but you don't just market yourself as circular, right? Or, or as green. You really have to have a strong ESG foundation to back it up. So what does that mean? E, environment. You've got to be able to, to measure your impact, measure your footprint, but, but not just measure, but how, do you, how are you improving on that? So, S is social. How do you, how do you, what's your impact on society? Corporations are seeing they have an impact. And so they're starting to measure that. So you, can, you need to be able to measure and report on that uh, yourself. Uh, G, governance. As part of ESG, how, do you, how you make your decisions is important. So how do your executives, what's the framework that your executives make the decisions on? And your, your board, are they weighing environmental and social uh, impacts as part of the decision-making process? It doesn't mean it overwhelms the, the, what's good for business but it is part of the criteria that you use in making decisions. So do you have a structure? Do you have a framework for looking at these issues? And then do you have transparent reporting to be able to, to say, hey, I've got a credible report that talks about my, what I'm doing from an ESG standpoint uh, that I can share with stakeholders that care. Uh, some are pursuing B Corp certification as an, another certification out there that really focuses in on E, S, and G. So as we think down towards the future, five to 10 years down the road, you know, what's the next decade look like? Well, you know, how are you going to differentiate yourself? You know, that may be certifications. It may be ESG. It may be other things. What do you need to do to prepare now and over the next few years for the changes that are, that are coming? We're seeing those new, new legislation and regulations that are going to impact your ability to trade and impact your, your clients uh, and what they have to do with their equipment. We're seeing blockchain and cyber currencies uh, that, are, that are becoming more and more real, right? So blockchain, what a, what a great tool to be able to, to track what happens to equipment. But, but cyber currencies, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not accepting uh, um, you know, any of these cyber currencies for payment right now, but, uh, but we're seeing that coming. So how is that going to impact your business in the future? And then technology and society, lastly, is intelligence and networking is being embedded in so many products these days, whether it's appliances or your car or what have you. We're seeing more and more of the Internet of Things, IoT, being embedded in products. So how are you going to provide additional services? How are you going to scale, expand your service to be able to handle that? And then how are you going to address stay at home, right? So work from home is here to stay. So how are, how are you supporting your clients in, in uh, that? How are you, what are you doing to prepare? So that's my, my five-minute uh, pitch. I just wanted to, to make sure that everybody was thinking, was on the same page with uh, with these big changes, these big shifts that are happening in the industry. Excellent, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Todd, take it away. Todd, Todd Bone, by the way, XSI CEO, also chairman of ASCDI. Todd. Thanks, Joe. Right. That was a fantastic overview. And thanks. Thanks for putting it so succinctly. It, it was just wonderful. So XSI has been in business for 30 years. The first 15 years, we were, you know, 95 percent in uh, product resale. In the last 15 years, now we're up to you know 90% in, in services, uh, third-party maintenance, IT asset disposition, and professional services. I will concur with Reich that the uh, you know new equipment is starting to hit the street. Um, our professional services division is doing a lot of rip and replace uh, jobs right now, so it is it is extremely active. The ITAD industry is very active, and so is maintenance. So we're we're I think we're in a recovery mode from last year. Things are getting back to, to full force. So hopefully you're seeing that as well. One of the things that uh, XSI is doing is we are um, going for our R2 uh, V3 certification and uh, have made an effort to implement that. I, you know, we've been doing ITAD for a while, but you know, for third party maintenance contracts, when we're dealing with a customer and they're deinstalling something, when they find out that we're, you know, we're doing ITAD, uh, they love it. So we're, they're already working with us. It's just an extension of the service that we're delivering. Um, you know, we're not so much focused on product resale, but I, I can I can tell you that, you know, from my experience, the industry of reselling products is changing. And let me tell you why. So, so first, when you're R2 certified, you've got to produce a test report for all of the products that you're reselling. So 
what was interesting for us is that we had an ITAD division and we were producing test reports and and whatnot. But on the on the refurbished side, where we were just buying products and reselling products, we weren't we weren't so concerned with that, and that wasn't a requirement. Under R2 certification, it is a requirement. So you're going to have to be changing what you're doing if you're going through, you know, going to an R2 certification. If you decide not to get an R2 certification, but you're selling to co- products to companies like XSI, we're going to require a test report. And um, so I think that, you know, there's things that you could be doing within your business to start preparing um, for selling to companies that are R2 certified or becoming R2 certified yourselves. The other thing that, you know, typically in the resale industry, you know, the, the word refurbished was good enough on a packing slip or, or invoice. And nowadays in the R2 certification world, you've got to have both cosmetic condition listed and also the fun- functional condition listed. And they've got their own set of, you know, measurements for those items that you would claim for cosmetic. And, uh, you know, at, at AACDI, we are concerned and working on trying to standardize that throughout the industry as well. So stay stay tuned for that, but that's coming. But the world, the world is changing. Uh, our IT environments and, and the way that you resell equipment is changing. Um, and the requirements that clients are going to have is changing. So we're here at AACDI to bring you and teach you what these changes are. And I think that you're going to get a lot out of this conference. We use Green Eye Partners, who's going to be speaking tomorrow as our consultant. I would definitely recommend to get a consultant if you're going to get a certification in R2. They're fantastic. We've really enjoyed working with them. Um, so I would definitely recommend them. But to, if you've got any questions on that R2, I, we're, we're racing to become the first company, I think, in the world that gets R2 V1 v3 certified so uh, we'll, we'll have a little bit of experience to share with you and happy to send you any kind of documentation but uh looking forward to a great conference joe and reich uh, i think we've got a fantastic lineup and i'm very excited about it thank you and and reich thank you very much as well um really i'll tell you the changes uh that this and she's going through um i've you know there there is there's more they're happening quicker and more um, encompassing than I think that ever, I've ever seen before. Uh, right. What, what's your feeling in that? Uh, yeah, I think things are accelerating. Uh, you know, the, the changes that whether it's the legislative side or whether it's certifications or whether it's uh, just companies becoming more aware of, of the environmental and social issues, uh, it's we're seeing just more and more acceleration going on. So, yeah. yeah. Hey, Ted Todd, uh, Reich just mentioned the legislative side. I know you've been very much involved with the right to repair. Uh, if we have a couple, we have a couple minutes. Can you tell us what's going on in that front? Yeah, and I think that uh, to to learn how that affects our industry, you should attend the Cisco licensing um, episode that we've got here later. Um, and you know, there there's companies out there, and I think you know you'll see in the news that Apple has been trying to basically monopolize, you know, the, the, the life cycle of the equipment coming back to them where they've got their own entity, uh, you know, their, their own stream of, of picking up the used equipment and recycling, et cetera, and not trying to avoid the market, to, you know, being involved with the resale of, of you know, Apple products. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, Cisco's got some things going on that are making it very difficult. The, the, the resale of Cisco equipment has gone way down over, the past year with changes in uh, their, their EULA for licensing and whatnot. But we'll cover that later. But yeah, it's, um, you know, repair.org um, has legislation in 26 states this year so far. And we are seeing extensive op- opposition from the, you know, big manufacturers that uh, don't want to allow for fair repair of your products. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that, you know, these products are very well made. Some Cisco mean time between failure products are 25 years. So, you know, manufacturers are making quality products, but they're forcing obsolescence. And, you know, reselling a product is the highest form of, uh, of recycling. So, you know, we've got, you know, we've got to have your help, especially monetarily. Uh, and if you could support repair.org, go to the site. It's very easy to sign up. 
have your employees pay $25, $50 a year. It helps them with their jobs. But also free I ITC is um, also doing a fantastic job in Europe. And I think that they've, you know, Europe is opening up a little bit more. The European uh, Union par Parliament has endorsed uh, right to repair over there and actually uh, forcing government agencies to buy, I think it's 20% of products to be refurbished. So, you know, we've, there, there's a lot of work to do. And today is the precipice of when we need your support because we are right there to try and get legislation pushed forward. And it's just going to, it's only going to open up opportunities for you. Great. Todd, th thanks for that. Okay. We have in five minutes, we're going to have our session with Blanco. So if you all want to take uh, just five minutes to go fill up your coffee cups or your beer mugs, depending on, on what you're drinking uh, or a bathroom break. Um, you could also, if you want, if you click on the button that says event, you'll be able to chat either video or text chat with any of the attendees. So do that for the next five minutes and we'll see you back here uh, in five minutes with the Blanco presentation. Thank you, Todd, again, Reich. Thank you. Everybody have a great day. I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes.